I am become death. The destroyer of worlds. For this video, I'm temporarily going to go back to background gameplay as my method of recording. Uh, just because I'm trying to test the microphone that I'm using and what angles work and don't work. But uh, showing my face is going to be back next week. Don't, don't you worry about that. There is a question that has been asked since the dawn of time, arguably. That question is, are people born good? I like to think this is a question most people have thought about at least once in their life. Some people think that people are born good, but corrupted later on in life. Some cynics believe that children are born as master manipulators with the inherent trait of selfishness that must be forced out of them. Now, the reason that I mention that is because typically in that debate, people believe that whichever the answer is, is also what people naturally are, if that makes sense. So if you're theoretically born good, you desire to be good your entire life, even if you make bad decisions. If you're born bad, you will always crave bad and have to learn to be good. Sure, there's nuance to that whole discussion, but for the most part, those are the two different sides people believe. So which is it? Are people born good or bad? That's a question I didn't really think there was an answer to until I watched Fallout. There are three characters you follow throughout the series. Lucy, the ghoul, also known as Cooper, and Maximus. Interestingly, these three characters are all different sides of a three-sided die. Not that those exist to my knowledge. Lucy is described by the Fallout Wiki as being kind, charming, plucky, strong, bubbly, and optimistic. Lucy strongly believes in the golden rule, which is to treat others as you wish to be treated. Now, the ghoul and Cooper have different personalities. See, Cooper was around before the bombs dropped, and the ghoul is him after being irradiated to the point of immortality, and also witnessing the trauma of the world ending and jaggedly putting itself back together. Cooper is described by the Fallout Wiki as a loving husband to Barb and father to Janie. He considered himself a staunch believer in the American dream and its value, having served in Alaska in the first years of the Sino-American War, and a staunch anti-communist as a result. He highly valued freedom and disliked vault rules. However, the changing culture and domination of megacorporations put his principles to the test. Eventually, he grew disillusioned as he did vault advertisements and suffered ostracism from his peers. When he learned that the very corporation his wife, his wife worked for conspired to use the nuclear war to implement its own designs for the world, he lost faith and tried to make a clean break and is suggested to have suffered a messy divorce and a blacklisting from entertainment work for it. The ghoul is described as a bounty hunter, a larger-than-life gunslinger capable of incredible brutality, even resorting to cannibalism when needed. 200 years of survival in the brutal wasteland has changed him into a cynical, bitter, and ruthlessly pragmatic man who doesn't believe in goodness, but still has a certain code of honor in his drive to find the whereabouts of his family. Despite his moral ruthlessness, he tends to remain civil when dealing with others, even those he intends to cause harm to. Maximus is a really interesting character, and I won't be reading the wiki for him because I'm- maybe I'm trying to change my ways, you don't know. Maximus has two different core personality traits that conflict with each other, at least from an outsider's perspective. Selfishness and selflessness. Does that seem confusing? Yeah, I bet it does. Yes, he does have a desire to save others and be the hero, but at the end of the day, he's out for himself. When he had the option to save Titus, he didn't because Titus was being a bitch who didn't deserve to wear his armor. But he also saves people from what he thinks is danger. He wants to be a hero, but in the wasteland, it's kill or be killed. Now, back to the question of if people are born good or bad. Again, this is a question I've always kind of had an optimistic view of. Maybe it was my religious upbringing, but I truly believe that people are born good. Doing the right thing isn't just something you're told to do because it makes other people's lives easier. It's something you do because theoretically you're supposed to want to. Stealing is bad because you're taking something from another person and that hurts them. Isn't it bad to hurt them? That's theoretical anyway. And it's a real conversation starter. It's not something that's brought up as having a right or wrong answer. If anything, it's a question that should determine who you are as a person depending on your answer. The more I started watching Fallout, the more I realized the answer is really obvious. People aren't born good or bad. 
They are simply born with a desire to survive, and what comes after that is still self-preservation. The ghoul is the most obvious example of this. He survived 200 years, and to still fight after that, you've got to want something to live. He doesn't want to become feral because not only would his mental state decline in a ship of Theseus, is it still him if he's not in there type of way, but he'd probably die a lot faster that way. He also wants to find his daughter. It's that paternal instinct to want to keep your family alive. It's a morbid way to think about it, but biologically speaking, parents are designed to form bonds with their children to have more reason to keep them alive and therefore keep the species alive. Maximus is also another obvious example of this. Yes, he wants to be a hero, but ultimately, he's out for himself. If it's him or somebody else, he picks him. When he has the option to stay in a vault, he does because it's safe and secure. He only moves to leave once Lucy is in danger, which, that's the hero instinct kicking in, but more importantly, it's because his morals are in danger and he will protect those morals in order to protect himself. Lucy, as kind as she is, still defends herself when she has to because instinctively, she wants to survive. She wants to because she wants to help her father, but it's still a base desire that is to fulfill what she wants. After that, it's to get revenge on her father because he killed the people of Shady Sands, something that went against her morals. When people feel like their morals are being threatened, they feel like they are being threatened. So in an act of self-preservation, they take action on that. Okay, maybe she doesn't want to kill him, but she wants him to face justice of some sort. Now, I don't want any of this to sound like I'm accusing them of being bad people or even selfish. What I am saying is that the bottom line is that people do things for a reason. And if you follow that reason back to the source, it is survival. And it is to protect and create the world that you believe will result in survival. So why am I saying any of this? What does any of this have to do with becoming death, so to speak? Well, sometimes what you want requires you to change. Lucy is a parallel to the ghoul's pre-war identity of Cooper Howard. Sure, they aren't perfectly similar, but they are products of their environment. Cooper, as an American who fought in a war to defend the country, no less, is a hardcore patriot who believes in the American dream. It's insinuated to him multiple times that he is a victim to propaganda, which is an idea that offends him greatly. Lucy, on the other hand, is a vault dweller raised in a pacifistic society where the worst that anybody could do to you is forget to say thank you. A strong believer in the golden rule and it's that simple. She seems really hurt when her tactics don't work out in her favor, when she tries to be nice and people are rude to her, because that's not what was supposed to happen. When she tries to release the feral ghouls and they attack her, she's hurt because she thought she was doing the right thing, so why is she being punished for it? What both of these characters learn throughout their journey in season one is that it's not that simple. Cooper has to come to the shocking realization that his wife who works at vault Tech fully intends to destroy the world to capitalize off of the apocalypse, even if it destroys her child's future, even if it makes everything wrong the second they start going right. He has to learn to understand that the way things are, the American dream, it's what destroyed America in the first place. He becomes a cynic because if he didn't, would he really have lasted this long? Clearly his daughter got to safety if he's so confident she's somewhere safe, even after 200 years. If he wants to save his daughter, he has to understand that the world isn't meant to go right, that people do not inherently have his best interest at heart. He has to become something new. Lucy is very similar. She starts the series believing in the good of humanity and believing in the golden rule. This is tested time and time again. She starts to realize most people aren't looking out for her, especially if they don't have anything to gain out of it. When she encounters Vault 4, this once again comes into question. She meets people who are trying to look out for her, but because she's become suspicious after being in the wasteland so long, she makes the presumption that they have bad intentions, only learning once it's too late that they were trying to help. Whether intentional or not, I do think Fallout has elements of the nature versus nurture argument. Lucy's good nature, as she notes multiple times, is a product of the way she was raised. She says her father would be devastated if he learned that she destroyed a society to try and find him, something that ironically isn't true given that her father himself destroyed Shady Sands. But after that reveal, she's against her father. What she holds are not her father's values. Instead, she holds her own values, values she believes to be her father's as well. As Maximus says, everybody wants to save the world. They just have different ideas of what that is. 
In Fallout 4, the Minutemen believe that saving the world means helping the little people who can't fight for themselves. The Railroad believes it's helping the synths, a group of people with little advocacy due to the fear surrounding them. The Brotherhood believe it's taking technology away from the people, believing that to be why the world ended in the first place. The Institute believes it's wiping the surface clean and starting anew with pure people. The Institute believes that eugenics is the solution, and a lot of people, even today, support eugenics in smaller ways. A lot of people believe that we should eliminate disabilities in order to make the human race more efficient, not quite understanding that disabilities are not a choice, but rather an unavoidable part of living as a species. No matter how hard you try to erase it, it'll never be gone. The Brotherhood acts as government taking control of what they believe can destroy the world in the wrong hands. Ironically, the bombs didn't drop because the average person had access to technology. They dropped because, as we learn in the show, vault Tech, an organization that had a heavy hand in the government, were the ones to drop the bombs. I could go on and on, but my point is, everybody is doing what they do because they think it's the right thing to do. The problem is that everybody has a different idea of how to save the world. Therefore, there isn't really good or bad. It's just different ideas of good and bad. The railroad's good is the Institute's bad, and so on. There's not a simple answer. There never was, and there never will be one. This is shown with all three main characters having moments of realizing that the method of saving the world that they thought was the right answer wasn't. The quote from the start of the video, the quote often associated with Oppenheimer, was, I have become death, destroyer of worlds. What he's saying in that quote is that in an attempt to help the world, he aided in its destruction. Cooper listened into the board meeting and realized that vault Tech, the company he thought was meant to protect the people after the bombs dropped, intended to use those same people as science experiments. Lucy believed vault Tech was trying to save the world as well, but more so believed it was meant to help rebuild the population after the world was ready to reclaim. That was technically true, but Reclamation Day wasn't meant to have competitors, causing her father to destroy the competition of Shady Sands and already established society after the war. Ironically, Shady Sands originated as vault dwellers too, but because they were perceived as competition, they were eliminated. Maximus believed the Brotherhood was out to help the people as their saviors and their heroes. He started to realize that maybe they aren't going about it the right way and that maybe once upon a time they did, but they've lost their way. Moldaver says to him, what would the Brotherhood do with unlimited power? Sowing the seeds for the question of, sure, they can use that unlimited power, but will they use it in the best way? In a way that they should be using it. At the end of the day, I don't think people are born good or bad. I think those ideas are too up to interpretation to say somebody inherently wants one or the other, or even one over the other. I think people are born with self-preservation in mind, a need to not only adapt, but in some cases make the world adapt to what you believe will work out for the best. Sure, your idea may not be bad, so to speak, but that doesn't mean it's going to help anyone. Your idea may not be good, so to speak, but that doesn't mean it doesn't save anyone. There is no right or wrong answer. It's simply the question of what ends up working. Meanwhile, there's no morals involved in that question, but still, people can't help but put morals on it. To me, Fallout as a concept explores this idea of becoming death. This idea that you, at some point in your life, believe something to be the right choice. Throughout your life, this idea is challenged. Maybe it's used against you, or maybe you learn it just isn't applicable. Sometimes, the morals you attach to it aren't the morals you need to survive, and you have to adapt, change your idea, and change who you are. What came before has to die in order for something better, or worse, to take its place. Nothing is meant to last forever. But that doesn't mean nothing will work. It just might destroy the world after it's worked for too long. Anyways, that was my video. I hope you guys liked it. It wasn't perfect, and I'm sorry if it's not organized well and if it sounds like shit. Um, I'm just trying to get this video out, and my microphone is not microphoning recently. Um, actually since I got it, which sucks. Um, I swear on my life I'm working on it. I will try to fix the sound as soon as I can. Um, but if you enjoyed my videos anyways, make sure to subscribe, leave a like or dislike whichever you fancy. With that, I hope you have an amazing day.